The book of Acts, chapter 7. And we resume our study today in verse 29. Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, was preaching a sermon. Really, it was a history lesson on the nation Israel and how they have continually over the year rejected God's chosen rulers. He's making the point that they did it again with Christ. This is nothing new. Their rejection of Jesus is just standard procedure for the Israelites. So, he's, he's telling the story. He's giving the history of Israel, and we pick it up in verse 29. It says, At this retort, Moses fled and became an exile in the land of Midian, where he became the father of two sons. Now, we saw last time the, Is the Israelites rejected Moses at first, too. And, of course, he was God's ordained leader. It says in verse 30, Now, when forty years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai in a flame of fire in a bush. After forty years in the desert, God appeared to Moses in a burning bush. God knows what to do to get our attention. And that was certainly enough to get Moses' attention. Verse 31. And when Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight. And as he drew near to look, there came the voice of the Lord. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. And Moses, rem and Moses trembled and did not dare to look. Moses is so afraid that he won't even look at the bush. God was there, you see. And no one is bold in the presence of God. Verse 33. Then the Lord said to him, Take off the sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And it was holy because God was there. Stephen was accused of not having proper respect for Moses. That's not true. He's saying all sorts of wonderful things about Moses. He knows what a great man Moses is. Verse 34. I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their groaning and I have come down to deliver them and now come I will send you to Egypt. Moses was God's deliverer. God chose him. Israel rejected him. Sound familiar? It's the same old story, isn't it? Again, that's Stephen's point. He's trying to make. Verse 35, This Moses whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? This man God sent as both ruler and redeemer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. And so God sent back to Egypt the man Israel had rejected as deliverer. God saved Israel even though he had to persevere through their stubborn rejection of his deliverer. It's a good thing God doesn't give up easy on us, or no one would ever get saved. 36. This man led them out, performing wonders and signs in Egypt and at the Red Sea and in the wilderness for 40 years. Signs and wonders are great, but their faith value is short-lived for those who are hard-hearted. Both Moses and Jesus did miracles, but both were still eventually rejected by the Israelites. 37. This is the true Moses who said to the Israelites, God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. Stephen begins to make the transition now from Moses to Jesus. Verse 38. This is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him at Mount Sinai and with our fathers. He received living oracles to give to us. 
They had accused Stephen, remember, of not respecting God's law because he was saying that Jesus fulfilled the law. But that wasn't true either. He says right here that the law came from God. He is answering all their accusations, proving that they are false. 39. Our fathers refused to obey him, but thrust him aside, and in their hearts they turned to Egypt. If the religious leaders are looking for someone who doesn't respect God's law, then they should look at their own ancestors first, because they rebelled right after God gave them the law. They rebelled against God, and they rebelled against the law. 40. Saint Aaron, make for us gods who will go before us. As for this Moses who led us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days and offered a sacrifice to the idol and were rejoicing in the works of their hands. Their Jewish ancestors were worshipped a golden calf and made plans to return to Egypt after God saved them from Egypt. And so they were breaking God's law as fast as God could write it on those stone tablets. Verse 42, But God turned away and gave them over to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, Did you bring to me slain beasts and sacrifices during the forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? They wanted to break God's law by worshiping other gods. They turned away from God, so God turned away from them. And he gave them the desires of their heart, too. He let them worship idols. 43. You took up the tent of Moloch and the star of your god, Rephem, the images that you made to worship, and I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. Israelite idolatry began with the golden calf in the wilderness shortly after they had been delivered from Egypt, and it climaxed with star worship right before they were conquered by Babylon as punishment centuries later. And so Israel has a track record of rejecting God. It's not surprising, therefore, that they rejected his son. Again, that's the point that Stephen is making here. 44. Our fathers had the tent of witness in the wilderness, just as he who spoke to Moses directed him to make it according to the pattern that he had seen. Our fathers, in turn, brought it in with Joshua when they dispossessed the nations that God drove out before our fathers. So it was until the days of David. Stephen has also been accused of blaspheming the holy temple. But here he honors it by saying that it was given to Israel by God. He's under the control of the Holy Spirit. This is all unprepared speech. But it's all under the control of the Holy Spirit. So it's very logical and systematic. Reputing the false accusations one after another. Verse 46. So it was until the days of David who found favor in the sight of God and asked to find a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. Yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made by hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hand make all these things? Stephen says, If you say I blasphemed the holy temple because I said it has become outdated and because I imply that God is bigger than just his temple, then you are the ones who are going against your own Bible. Stephen is saying, I was arrested for saying what our holy scriptures teach. God is more than his temple. 51. Stephen says, you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit, as your fathers did, so do you. They were running their religion their way. And when someone like Jesus or Stephen interjects, interjected God's word, you know what they did? They killed them. 
They were stiff-necked. In other words, too prideful to bow before God. Verse 52. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You who received the law is delivered by angels and did not keep it. Why, who's on trial here, huh? Stephen says, your ancestors killed the holy prophets and you took it to the next step. You killed God's son. You brag about the law. You are so proud to have the law, but you break it in the worst possible ways. And you've always done it. 54. Now when they heard these